A church in Texas recently live-streamed their unauthorized production of the hit musical Hamilton, with the text and music altered to push their problematic Christian agenda. Like a sermon comparing homosexuality with drug addiction. Okay, I get why people are mad about that, but I actually am addicted to homosexuality. Like, I'm not even trying to quit. Jokes aside, being gay is actually nothing like a drug addiction, because it comes with so much more such as parades, parties, and a drug addiction. And frankly, I don't know why the Dor McAllen Church chose a Broadway musical to convey this hateful message. I mean, Hamilton is already the gayest thing they have on Disney+, Plus, not including me when I look up old episodes of Lizzie McGuire. Thanks to a trusty Twitter friend, I was able to watch the church's entire illegal production, which father, son, and ghosted so many copyright laws that eventually Hamilton's legal team was like, fine, just put your show on and we'll decide how much to sue you for later. And that's how we're able to witness what I'm calling Holy Hamilton, with its awkward sounding rewrites, awkward sounding vocals, entirely new scenes that show the magic of Jesus, and costumes that show the magic of Macy's. Today, we're dancing on Disney's slippery slope of copyright and commentary for an unauthorized installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive in to our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content on the web, and we break it down like you're licensed to distribute a hit musical on a television, to look at each individual clip and say, father, son, no, father, son, yes. What religion am I even mocking there? Doesn't matter, because before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns on unauthorized productions like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So according to the Washington Post and Twitter user Hemant Meta, the lawyers at Hamilton became aware of this unauthorized production after the Dor McAllen Church started running advertisements saying not only would they be doing this Christian version of Hamilton, but also that they had full right to. Like they had acted like it was an authorized musical. I'm gonna be honest, it was tough to stay focused throughout this two plus hour production. And I frequently found myself looking at my phone, although that could also be because I'm completely hooked on the mobile game Pocket Styler, also the sponsor of today's video. With Pocket Styler, you can choose from a huge collection of clothes, accessories, perfume, even makeup look, so that you can create a character with an authentic sense of style that matches yours. I was never like much of a fashion person, but this game turns out to be a really fun outlet for my creativity, and I'm building my understanding of what makes garments so work together. Other players vote for who wore it best so that I can try to earn influence and cash for my next outfit or exclusive items. My favorite part is that I get to roast or praise other people's looks, but I'm critical, all in an effort to become a trendsetter for the next season. I love starting to learn what my personal style is, understated, elegant people, pieces, not trying to do the most. And I also love that other players are validating my choices or letting me know when I've made a fashion faux pas. Pocket Styler is completely free and available on iOS and Android. Download Pocket Styler today and maybe I'll see you out there and we can rate each other's outfits. Some of these just aren't working, but you'll have to let me know your thoughts when you use the link in my description to download Pocket Styler. See you on the leaderboard, honey. Now, let's try and focus on this Hamilton, 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 Hamilton. Like the Hamilton lawyers, I was also deeply concerned the second I heard this announcement. We are having the Hamilton play in the Hamilton play. You came to see the, 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 the play, amen? Ugh, nothing lets me know that straight people are meddling in something they shouldn't be, like when they refer to a musical production as a play. Does this look like King Lear? We're learning four pirate harmonies and intermediate dance steps. Compared to us, waiting for good dough is just two boring idiots who don't realize they could be having sex to pass the time. In any community theater production, there was always one straight guy who would show up to the first rehearsal for Susical the Musical and announce like, hey, I'm Ethan, this is actually my first play. Or they'd come up to me at school and be like, hey, what time is play practice this week? And I would just be like, oh, sweet, stupid Ethan. The way I'm about 
about to correct you is the closest thing to a hate crime that my people are capable of committing against you. It's not a lot, so pardon me for relishing in the experience. It's called rehearsal. We are rehearsing for a musicale. And if you have a problem with that, why don't you go eat someone's about it, you straight, straight, straight. Ugh, see, I'm not good at hate speech. You win this round, straight people, but our domain is the theater. It seems like uh, the Dor McAllen Church kind of assumed they would be able to get away with this because they plugged a sermon onto the end of the production to kind of buy into that loophole. As the onstage blog wrote when they first reported this story, ministries have a very limited exemption from copyright laws. During worship services, churches are usually permitted to play or perform any song or reading. But that only extends to live in-person performances, not things that are gonna be live streamed and that you have to buy tickets to. Regardless, here's that sermon that the church thought they were free and clear when adding, like they thought this statement would make the production less problematic. Okay. This in time with God right now. He is knocking right now some of you at the, at the, at the heart, at the doors of your heart right now. Uh, I'm sorry, the what, 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 what now, Father? This is the part of the speech where you start comparing homosexuality to alcoholism, buddy. Don't fumble the message now. Good branding though, by the way, to be like, let's use the word door, the door of your heart, because we're the Door McAllen Church. Well, the church is on fire and the doors are locked, so you better find a new way out. If God is knocking at the back door to my heart or whatever, then you better say it with your whole chest. Deliver the word, sir. And uh, here it comes, special delivery. He knows exactly what you've gone through. You've gone through maybe broken marriages. Maybe you struggle with alcohol, with drugs homosexuality, maybe you, you, you struggle with other things in life. Mm, thanks, but I'm definitely not struggling with homosexuality. That's actually the easiest part of my whole daily routine. Honestly, my biggest struggle is deciding who I want to be homosexual with. Also, how is God gonna come down here and help me through my homosexuality? He's gonna finally introduce me to the perfect girl? Well, he already did by casting Selena Gomez on Wizards of Waverly Place. But guess what? Still gay as a lubed up cucumber over here. But this guy is right. I do struggle with other things in life. For example, right now I'm struggling with his cheap loafers and pages of notes flapping around. Uh, how is he not off book yet on opening night? His lines have been around the longest. The Bible is older than like Les Mis on Broadway. As I said, Hamant over at a Friendly Atheist here on YouTube, his Twitter really called out a lot of the biggest differences between the original Hamilton production and the McAllen Church because large sections, I know from watching all two hours and 10 minutes of it, large sections of the show remained completely unchanged. But even that still would have been a problem because the church was saying up front, like, we have permission to do this when no, they never did. Hamilton doesn't even sell amateur licenses of this show to perform yet. And this show is straight up performed by kids. What I'm gonna do is compare the original Hamilton lyrics and music and then show you right after the church's Jesified version. How does it die? Master, orphan, son of a whore. How does the scoundrel? Son of a harlot. You know, I always thought the unique rhyming scheme was part of what makes Hamilton work. Turns out it is. Mama, if your words don't rhyme, then you're basically just reading a biography in Lin-Manuel Miranda written. He was born in January on the 11th in the year of 1750. Five. Like, okay, rhythm. That sounds boring. Clearly you can understand how the original took off. It had lyrics that were like, he was a rebel like the devil, final boss of the level, and he signed all the documents, pen was a feather. You know, it's fun. It's hip hop meets schoolhouse rock meets seeing your history professor on the weekend. By the way, Lin-Manuel Miranda did make a statement on Twitter saying he was grateful to all who reached out about this unauthorized production. Now the lawyers do their work. He also shouts out the dramatist Gil probably his union that helps make his millions by selling this musical and others. You know, they were one of the first to release a statement being like, we condemn this production. But at first I'm like, well, they just sort of changed the words and music to make it less explicit, which is something I'm used to seeing in like the school productions of shows like Les Mis school production. They tone down the violence and some of the less savory aspects, but they're always done in an approved way by like the original songwriters, not this. Not this. Again, original Hamilton versus the church. I am Hercules Mulligan, up in it, loving it. Yes, I heard your mother say, Come again. Yes. My youngest daughter sent horses. Of course, it's hard to have intercourse over four sets of courses. I am Hercules 
mulligan up in 11 and you both spying for the government hey. like up your secrets and horses of course it's hard to keep them from me when i'm coming for your sources first of all these unauthorized costumes are giving me interview with the vampire low budget it's a zoom interview this time and i know that gentleman on the right is meant to be setting some sort of rhythm but i guess the whole thing works you know they're off 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 broadway so he's gonna be off 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 beat also in case you missed it the original lyric was lock up your daughters and horses of course it's hard to have intercourse over four sets of corsets which first of all no offense that sounds a lot like he wants to have sex with horses as well as my daughters it's a crazy party maybe that's why the church changed it to lock up your secrets and horses and then it's hard to keep them from me when i'm coming for your sources not them also plagiarizing the weather girls The team at Hamilton made a statement also letting everyone know that they had never authorized this version of the play. I just called it a play. I'm straight now. Ugh. Ugh. They sent a cease and desist to the church on Saturday after one of the performances had been live streamed. And they said, this was surprising to me, but I think Disney and Hamilton was just doing this so that they didn't have to make the story even bigger. Hamilton informed the church that they could proceed with the August 6th performance on the conditions that it was not live streamed or recorded, no photos or videos would be posted, and they not mount any further productions, and they would be discussing this matter with the parties behind this unauthorized production within the coming days once all the facts are properly vetted. So they basically were like, you know what? Just do the show. Don't let anyone see it. Don't have any evidence that it ever existed online. And then afterwards, we'll talk about it to see what really went down. Because the church was like, oh, we thought we had permission. It's like, you didn't. And then they took this weird kind of allowance that Hamilton made to be like, good news everyone, the show is back on. They gave us our blessing and we're so grateful they entrusted us to make this production happen. And it's like the opposite of entrusted you. They're like, don't even tell anyone about it. Why would they ever bless the church to go ahead and make changes to the production that actually are contrary to the spirit and message of the story, which is about equality, progressive thinking, and really the freedom that America is supposed to offer all people. And even the cast itself of Hamilton is diverse, more diverse than the actual people who, who you know, the show is based on because Lin-Manuel wanted the cast to represent the diversity of America. So to add on like an anti-gay message to the beginning or end of this is just like, that's so cringy. And it shows how much money this church has if they're able to put on a pretty big production with live streaming capability you know, it, it looks like there's money in this, not like Broadway money, but still, they clearly have enough money to try to use this as some weird tactic to convert people on the internet to Christianity who just started out as Hamilton fans. Weird. I gotta say, whoever took the effort to go and change the music and script of Hamilton, seemingly it's all staged just based off of like orchestral karaoke tracks, and the staging is basically copying the version of this that was acquired by Disney+. Plus. Also, the Hugh of this church thinking they could just go ahead and reproduce the show when Disney paid 72 million for the right to play this on Disney Plus, the biggest single feature acquisition in media history. Like obviously there are gonna be lawyers getting involved here. And whoever rewrote the lyrics obviously has no experience writing lyrics. Like everything feels very uh, rushed. What is a legacy? It's planting seeds in a garden you never get to see. It's knowing you repented and accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ that sets men free. Damn, okay. Why does the jesus -y list always have so many more steps? Hold on. I get that the Dor McAllen Church thought being a congregation would excuse them from copyright laws, but why syllables? Why did they think syllables don't count for them? They said, Mary had a little lamb, and then she accepted Jesus into her heart and also repented for her sins and got baptized, circumcised, crystallized in heaven. Somehow it was catchier before, sweetie, Father John. I saw Hamilton live when it was touring at the Pantages Theater in LA with my dear friend Eric. It was so cool. And this reminded me, seeing the 2016 recording from Disney, I'm like, oh, such good music. When they're like, look around, look around. And then when she sings this part, I forget what song this is called, but it's when Elizabeth Hamilton, Eliza Hamilton, Hamilton's wife. It's a song where Hamilton's life is describing her great accomplishments after Hamilton, spoiler alert, dies in a duel. Private orphanage in New York City. 
Okay, at this point I'm noticing a big difference sonically between the two performances. Team Bigotry said, The Orphanage! Like, okay, creaky choir of Christ, you just proved that at least one orphanage needs to stay private. Those harmonies are not ready for public exhibition. I introduce hundreds of children to diseases now they're throwing up. That's from my church play about the importance of safe food handling. Because last month, three people died after our Ash Wednesday spaghetti dinner. By the way, my plushie of the mug can character is still on pre-sale. We need to sell 95 more to make sure these ship out in time for holidays. Order up, bop, bop. Link in description. I forgot about this song. The whole like last act of this play I felt like was Hamilton's wife being like, fuck you, but also hello. I love when she's like, I'm not afraid. I love the original. I'm gonna call her Eliza. Eliza Doolittle. But I'm not afraid. Enough what, sister? Not diaphragm support for those vocals, we know that. Also, there wasn't enough steam applied to that skirt she's wearing. We are wrinkled, dinkled, like the father time. It feels like I'm looking at the blue, ageless, sateen face of Jesus himself. They didn't have collagen peptides back then. Again, I would say the most egregious part of this production, aside from the anti-gay bigotry, is just the lack of creativity. I didn't know every Jesus-y alteration that they made to this production would just be a forced line about accepting Jesus into my heart. Baby girl, this is 130 minutes long. I would accept Jesus into my ass if it meant I could have a brief intermission to go get raisinets and an icy. I don't care if all 12 of his disciples are in the room watching, but no one's allowed to join in unless I give them the nod. Sorry, but you can tell some of those guys have not had anyone wash their feet since before Christ. So I'm assuming the same goes for their genitals. Allow me to be selective. Can't say no to Jesus though. Give me your dirty Jeez. If you thought that these weird rewritten lyrics were destroying the original structure of the show, then wait until you find out that there are entire scenes, like at the end, when Jesus himself does accept Christ. I don't know who this guy selling Christ is. Andrew Burr? Is that the guy who shot him? Aaron Burr. Sir? Dum -ba -dum -da -dum. Remember the part in the show where they shoot each other? Yeah, I don't either. This was a long time ago. Anyway, this scene sucks. Pray with me, sir. Receive Jesus Christ in your heart right now. Do you not only confess, but repent of all your sin? Yes. Do you accept him as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Heavenly Father, I pray for Alexander. I pray that you bring him peace of mind, that you would restore his family and his marriage. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. I gotta say, I can see why Lin-Manuel Miranda chose to cut this scene. It definitely causes the show to drag a little right at the end. It feels like when you call the drugstore and they make you sit through a prolonged list of phone options before you can talk to a human. Do you not only confess, but repent of all your sin? Yes, yes. Do you accept him as your Lord and Savior? Yes, yes, yes. Father, Speak to pharmacist. Speak to I pharmacist. Pray. You know what? F it. I'm going off my meds. Hot girl summer. No unmedicated summer. This is not the first time the Dor McAllen Church has done an unauthorized production. It's just the first time they got caught. You may already know Jenny Nicholson has done a video on the Marvel movies that churches have adulterated, but the church itself that we're talking about here has also done their version of Toy Story, the Minions. It's like, are you trying to convert kindergarten? by sprinkling in poorly written Jesus. Like you be you're better off just like letting them watch the movie and then showing them the passion of Christ after. That's what my parents did and I turned out great. No Broadway production is safe. Here's a version of Beauty and the Beast put on by the church, which all of this used to be on YouTube until the legal trouble from Disney started. Suddenly it's all scrub-a-dubbed from the net. What other story do you know of an innocent prince who chose to become like everyone else 
only to be hated and killed to free his people. I mean, there's Grapes of Wrath, A Tale of Two Cities, Uncle Tom's Cabin, Lord of the Rings, pretty much like every book. What I wanna know is why does your beast look like he has a cell phone in every one of his pockets? Is that beast dealing drugs? What did you all think of this unauthorized production of Hamilton? Would you like to check out the entire version of it? I'm glad that I did. By the way, a huge thank you to my Twitter follower, Jenny, who also was giving amazing advice to help me beat that Nancy Drew computer game a few months ago. What a blessing. I'm truly the Jesus of this world, blessed beyond belief, and constantly being nailed. <laughs> Ah, ho, he. Anyway, I'll put the links to all of the sources for this video in the description below. Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, give me a big thumbs up if you want to see more Christian propaganda broken down like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. And you'll always be the first to know when I'm not afraid of getting copyright blocked from the Hamilton lawyers. Also, I've got merch available, a Patreon with exclusive content and watch parties and the pre-sale for my plushy muggy blushy. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for being alive in the 1700s with me today. I will see you next time.